Today, I want to talk about X-Men for the Sega Genesis. And I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, Joe, that's not obscure. That's an X-Men video game. But to that I say, shut up! Because before I did this episode, I was looking at a lot of lists of the best X-Men video games, and this wasn't on there. Everybody talked about the sequel because, oh, you can play as Magneto, but come on, let's talk about this game. It's rad. X-Men was developed by Western Technologies and published by Sega for the Genesis in 1993. At the time, the X-Men were at arguably the peak of their popularity with the animated series The Hottest Thing in the World. The video game lets you take control of four of the most popular X-Men, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Gambit, and Wolverine, as they try to stop another one of Magneto's attempts to crush them in his bid to rule humanity. The story begins with Magneto, unbeknownst to the X-Men, infecting the Danger Room computers with a virus, causing its simulations to become increasingly more dangerous to the point where the heroes' lives are in danger. The X-Men must fight through simulations of a variety of famous Marvel locales, including the Savage Land, Shi'ar Empire, Excalibur's Lighthouse, Ahab's Future World, the Mojoverse, and finally Magneto's base, Asteroid M. The X-Men are up to the task, though, as each hero has their own mutant power that helps them fight through the danger. Gambit has his cards charged with kinetic energy that home in on enemies. Cyclops has his optic blasts that can ricochet off walls when charged. Wolverine's claws greatly increases melee damage, and Nightcrawler can teleport, which not only helps in boss battles, but also allows you to straight up skip portions of the levels with a single button press. Other X-Men like Rogue, Archangel, Storm, Iceman, and Jean Grey all offer support roles and act as summon characters, which come in very handy when fighting against the bosses. The boss encounters feature some of the X-Men's most well-known adversaries like Juggernaut, don't you know who he is? Sabretooth, Apocalypse, Mojo, and of course, Magneto. What's great about this game is that it doesn't just feel like a generic action game with the X-Men slapped in. Each member of the team feels like they should with their appropriate strengths and weaknesses. It lends an air of authenticity to the game, which, when coupled with the detailed sprites and level designs, should make it a really appealing game to fans of Marvel's mutant heroes. The game is also really hard. The lowest difficulty setting, Amateur, cuts you off after the first three levels, so to see the end you need to tackle it on Hero or Mutant difficulty. Enemies take multiple hits and always seem to pop up when it's too late to react to them, and some levels, like Ahab's Future World, feature lots of bottomless pits to avoid. Most bosses' weak points are very hard to hit and are only exposed for a second or two, so you'll be relying on your summons for most of them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, though. A difficult game that demands focus and patience can be very rewarding, especially when it has a soundtrack as awesome as this one that creates an atmosphere that will certainly have your blood pumping. The game is super cheap. You can get the card alone for $5, but a complete copy is going to run you about 10 If you find a copy that has a poster inside, can I have it? X-Men for the Genesis is a fun, challenging action platformer that's a great symbol of that era in the X-Men fandom. It's solid gameplay built around mechanics that suit the source material wrapped up in great graphics and music. And look, the sequel's really good, but let's make sure to give the original some love too, yeah?